Well, it's been nearly 10 months since these bike lanes have been installed on Bloor Street. And tonight, a uh, public meeting gave a chance for people to give their input on whether these bike lanes, as part of a project, a pilot project, should stay or go. Since we've had the divided bike lanes, I feel much more confident. For most cyclists, these bike lanes on Bloor have been a welcome addition. I love it. I just sometimes just come along to look at the shops and have coffee. I think it's amazing. I really like them. The only issue for me, since I bike on them a lot, is that they don't go all the way east or west. The city has reached the halfway mark on a pilot project that saw 2.6 kilometers of bike lanes added between Avenue and Shaw. Well, what we've seen is that the number of cyclists is up. Uh, that the, the degree of safety has been improved for both cyclists and for drivers, uh, and that there's been a minimal impact on vehicle travel times. A survey of over 6,000 people showed drivers felt 34% more comfortable sharing the road with bikes than they did before the dedicated lanes. But it hasn't been smooth sailing for everyone. Now I have to look for the bikes. They're going 100 miles an hour sometime and get myself safely across to the curb. From Bay all the way across to Shaw, it's a disaster. Traffic is just jammed right up, and what they're doing is they're going up side streets. Barton Street is like a highway. And it's not just drivers and passengers who say the project has its challenges. So a lot of older people can't uh, come to us, and we have lost a little bit of that clientele. The owner of Crepe Agogo Go says the lanes have posed a problem when it comes to conducting daily business. It's been very hard because in terms of deliveries, I don't know if you can see, but here on the lane we can't do deliveries. We cannot have any pickup, drop-off. Suppliers are very upset. They get tickets. And for us, it's a lot of stress. Some businesses that came to us and said, you know what, we're still struggling. And so we created nine dedicated loading zones on side streets immediately adjacent to Bloor. Tonight's meeting was a chance for residents to voice their opinions about the pilot project and help the city figure out how to make the lanes better. And even those who are in favor say there's still room for improvement. Because the intersections are one area where you can get right hooked as a car turns right and you try to go through. I think this, uh, the motorists deserve a little bit more instruction with uh, at every right turn they need that yield sign. We did this as a pilot so that we could make changes in real time. This has to be a collaborative process so we can understand understand concerns, work to address them so that this does work as a street in a better way for everybody. Now, the city is working on collecting more data that will be presented this fall, and that's when City Council will make a, a decision on whether to keep these lanes as is, modify them, or scrap them altogether.